I was using this opportunity to sell drugs to young people and initiate crime. So I got arrested uh, more than actually three times. Unity, it's one of the first uh, communities that I, I taught Capoeira Angola in. And I feel a special, personally, a special connection uh, and um, value in this community. I think the youth here really benefit a lot from Capoeira Angola. Back in Nairobi, urgently. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Mwah. We'll be holding the festival this year in here in Kibera and in Watamu, Kenya. You can love the comments and getting the affirmation that plans change. So people are killing neighbors that they had uh, lived with for several years. Thank you you. don't even expect vibration. I bring the vibration. <laughs> Hello, wherever you are, it's Victor's with Victor family. I'm back in Nairobi and uh, urgently, back in Nairobi urgently. And you're probably wondering why. First and foremost, I wanna say thank you for our loyal subscribers and commenters. Um, I feel very privileged to have you guys as supporting. We almost at 3K. So if you're new here, please remember to hit that subscribe button. Let's get to 3K! Yeah, I did, uh, the last video I did was the video of my house. I was a bit disappointed, but uh, also I really loved the comments. I was reading the comments and I really loved the comments and getting the affirmation that plans change, things are corrected, and people sit on the boardroom to change a lot of things. I was a bit disappointed, but I think getting that, I was actually very happy to be able to share. And thanks to everybody who's sending their blessings and their support for Victor. So Victor, we celebrate and appreciate you. This would have not been possible without you. Saying that to say that I really honor and appreciate the vibration that we have at Victor's with Victor. Also, it's really exciting i'm not in any pressure to build my house uh as you can tell we stay forever young so there's no pressure about anything that's the thing about being enlightened when you're still young and able um and young to mean that age is just a number <laughs> but when i say young when we are still able to move and we are, when we are still able to you know um enable things happen when we're still able to remember to have money if you know you already know this is april the t-shirts are gonna be out soon but also um yeah i've been looking at the vibration around i appreciate my loyal supporters and i'm gonna be mentioning them at 3k like we always do as we celebrate yeah i like when people feel like they are in kenya with us and they're part of Victor's with Victor. The recommendations are very awesome about people are recommending for my house. Yeah, I have been really conflicted on whether to show that. And in um, not just that, hmm, really bad. Not in just that, generally in Africa, we get conflicted on what to show because a lot of people view with jealousy. And so what they see is bragging. I'm very privileged to have supporters who only see inspiration because the goal of Victor Should Victor, as you guys can read, is to learn, share, inspire. Exactly. And so I'm very happy that I don't have supporters who are jealous or envious in a very negative uh, way. And we don't receive negative energy. And if it's received, you guys come and support me and protect me. This is noble. I've seen people attacking people who are coming to my channel to bully me. And I'm like, damn, this is the kind of support I want to have. I'm enjoying having the few subscribers. Uh, we would love and our supporters keep saying, you have to grow. Uh, but I'm really enjoying this. Like I said, my fear is to have traction in a lot of people because yeah, I've seen people who come here for the first time and only one time view one video and all they are looking for is how to bring us down and negative comments. So I really celebrate and appreciate you guys. Uh, so to what I'm here for, I'm in Nairobi for this festival. My organization uh, is doing a festival courtesy of uh, Salim Rollins. So we Salim Rollins, I've done an interview with him before. Salama! 
Uh, yeah, I'd done an interview with him before, but if you're new here and you didn't catch the interview, you can try and check it out there. He's an African-American uh, who moved to Kenya and uh, came to my program. As you guys know, I started with dancing, a dance program, and I was doing break dancing, which we are doing break my county after this, which I'm still taking it back to the county, guys. So exciting. <laughs> you guys are spoiled. <laughs> But I'm loving it. I enjoy spoiling you guys because you guys are also spoiling me on the comment section. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you guys. Yeah, I did karate. I also did kung fu. And um, so Salim came and uh, there was no, no one who was teaching Capoeira Angola, which I was particularly interested in because it was of its low nature. And I think... Um, the origin is from Africa, so I was interested in that. I went to a couple of his classes when I was in university. I was sponsored because my professor was uh, uh, my student, my breaking student. And so he sponsored me to go to Salim's class. I really wanted to go, but uh, I don't know how we knew. It's just how energy works sometimes. Um, uh, energy works like that and and uh, so he sponsored me to go to Salim class I went to Salim's class but I knew him from Chicago so when he moved back to Chicago because I was in university and I was really struggling uh, I wasn't able to pay for the classes so I I, 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 I I created a relationship with Salim and the goal of that relationship was actually what we're doing now was actually to convince him uh entice him to come to my community luckily enough he was he something that he'd been dreaming of his dream eventually was to start a program or do a program with the youth in a community in africa history of capoeira angola we can get into it if you guys are interested but i want to keep this short um so he came to my community and I articulated a class. So first of all, I cleaned the room that we were using. It was pretty much small, so I cleaned it. And then I made sure all the youth that I was working with, at that time I was working with almost 25 young people. I made sure that they were available and I explained to them the importance of this. I had a, you know, a selling line for them, so I sold it to them and they were very curious to come. And uh, they came to the class, the vibration they gave Salim, Salim has never received anywhere. Salim has taught in Brazil, in the US. He's from California, so no, he's from DC. Yeah, so he's never had that vibration. So he had that vibration. And after that class, he didn't show it, but he later called me. He was like, when again can I come back for a class? And I was like, ooh, it's not me asking him, it's him asking to come. And so he came for the next class and he was supporting himself to be coming for the classes. Um, initially, he didn't have a car, so he was using a uh, matatu. And so what I would do in return for appreciation is give, you know, here in Africa, when we don't have money, we give small things like even a wristband or a necklace, just something to keep somebody going. I mean, I got that from my mom. so. He kept coming once every week and then after two years, can you imagine he was volunteering after school for two years in Kibera without no salary, without nothing. And and so after coming for two years, um, he met somebody and he talked to them about the program that he's doing in Kibera. And this somebody said, okay, we have a family foundation and we'd like to support that you know and so i hope you guys are learning something from this and so they started supporting salim and um they were supporting the capoeira program for the longest time i think my program has been uh, self-funded so i used to do a lot of shows um and i also used to do a lot of tours uh, so i would save money and the guest i was also was one of my sources of funding i know people have been asking where victor gets his money um, I'm really open to sharing with you guys more about it, uh, but I, I think I was always thinking about ways to make money and to be able, Nairobi Madness, 
to be able to have a sustainable project that if Victor left today, uh, it's still able to continue. So what I did is um, when these people decided to support Salim um, to be coming to the program, I was actually very happy because then he wouldn't have to struggle about taking Matatu. He was able to take Uber then and come to the program uh, at least twice, no, once every week. And they did that for two years. And then one time, the Family Foundation decided they want to come to Kenya and see the program. Because every time Salim was giving them the program, I hadn't met the Family Foundation. They were, he was always talking about Victor, 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 Victor was the copies of this work. And so one day they decided, oh, they want to come and meet me. They came and met me and they saw my program as well. And they said, okay. So for me, actually, it was important that they were supporting Salim. Why? Because um, when I started break dancing here, I got arrested a couple of times because I was doing performances in the street. And during that era, we had uh, young people who were selling drugs, who were into crime. So they thought I was using this blood because when I was doing break dancing, a lot of young people would come into the circle. So they thought I was using this opportunity to sell drugs to young people and initiate crime. So I got arrested uh, more than actually three times. And my people didn't understand, so they always thought I was crazy when I would go and then turn on the music and start dancing. Less did they know that my dancing, how I got into dancing is a story that we can get into another time, or maybe some of you know, but it's from the trauma in 2007. We had a post-election violence and there were brutal killings around us. And I, I, you know, like uh, anybody who was here in Kibera during that time, you'd walk around and see uh, dead bodies of people that you know and that can be traumatic and also uh, you'd walk around and see bodies on fire like Kenya has 47 tribes which is excitingly our next project I hope you guys are looking forward to me taking you through the tribes and also sharing the culture and Kenya has 47 tribes. I think the 48th had been discovered. And so it was a tribal conflict. You see how the Western world has like racial conflicts. We had a very bad tribal conflict. And so people were killing neighbors that they had uh, lived with for several years. And it was brutal because neighbors were killing neighbors. You understand what I mean? And uh, yeah, it was very ugly. So I experienced that. And then um, we didn't really have resources for counseling. I think I've said this before. We didn't have resources for counseling. So I found healing in music and dance. And that's really what led to what we have today in the organization. So our organization, you can go and check it out at www.inukaculturalcenter.org. Go check it out. I can also share the website on the link. And uh, you can see, connect to us and Salim and see if you want to be part of this in any way. But I think that was the co-foundation of that work. So when Salim came in, back to it, when Salim came into my community and we would do uh, Capoeira Hoda, which is profiling, I took advantage of that. And Salim knows this and we talked about it. So a lot of young African leaders are not celebrated here until somebody from outside comes and celebrate them is when they are celebrated. So Salim came in and we were doing street orders. Actually, when I stopped, uh, when they stopped arresting me is when they saw me on, a t on the TV. I did a couple of TV shows uh, here in Kenya. And so when the area authority saw me on TV, they called me and they apologized. And they gave me permission to be able to apologize. And that was the breakthrough for the world, to, to be able to perform anywhere in Kibera, in the streets of Kibera. That was the breakthrough um, of this work uh, that I do today. And now we're able to perform everywhere. I mean, I've worked with more than, I don't know, Within the region of East Africa, I think more than 2,000 youth, but in Kibera, I think I have more than 500 students. I was the first break dancer in Kibera, but now I see a lot of groups that have been initiated by the kids that are inspired, taught, and uh, learned from me. I learned from YouTube, <laughs> just so you know. 
and uh so to be able to see that flourish is what advice the transition into victor with victor i know a lot of people have been like ah oh, yo you need to go back to dancing i'll get to the story of dancing and why i'm not really huge on the floor right now but what i have cannot be taken from me because i learned it from the university of the streets of kibera and so um, i was really privileged to meet salim when he came in the community started seeing me different and not looking at me like this guy is insane or this guy is crazy so now salim is doing a festival we are doing a festival it's called majinga ancestral i'll let you explain i'll let him explain to you guys about majinga ancestral but it's a capoeira you can also check out capoeira and learn about it like i said learn share inspire and uh, it's going to be big because it's bringing the diaspora, people from abroad. It's going to be an international festival and I'll share with you guys. If you are interested, let me know if you're interested to know about the festival. So we're going to be in Nairobi for um, a good part of next week. Then we'll be going to the coast, which will also give me an opportunity to be sharing with you guys about the coast, the culture. And we might start the trip. No. Pole pole. let's finish the counties and then we do the tribe because i want to bring you guys details i really appreciate when you guys say you learn a lot and that keeps me going that in it keeps me going and i really appreciate that so pray for more money for more blessing for victor for me to be able to bring you into kenya like i brought you guys while doing the kibira tour while doing the nairobi tour and now the county tours right of importance i think um i'm not really interested in getting into the details of the counties but i want to bring different stories in the county also let me know what you guys would like to watch but pretty much that's it so we're going to talk to salim so he can uh bring uh, light into the festival if you want to be part of the festival you can reach out to uh, inuka directly or salim or you can even send me an email and a lot of people are struggling to get my email but i'm gonna drop it on every link of the description it's victors with victor 23 at gmail.com all right I celebrate and appreciate you guys. Let me talk to Salim and then we close this. I hope you guys really appreciated the stories that I brought you to you guys. I really appreciate and celebrate. I think I keep saying this more than enough, but I'm very grateful and appreciate and celebrate you. Peace. Salim. My name is Salim Rollins. Within the Capoeira community, I'm Mestre Salim. I'm the founder of Manjinga Ancestral Festival, which is focuses on Capoeira Angola and African arts. And we'll be holding the festival this year in here in Kibera and in Watamu, Kenya. Manjinga Ancestral is a Capoeira Angola and African Arts Festival. Uh, I established this festival back in 2013 in uh, Oakland, California. And uh, we've had three festivals since then. Uh, one in Kenya in 2017 with Maestro Jean Granji, who is uh, an icon and an important figure in the Capoeira Angola community. He's 91 years old. Uh, and then we had a follow-up one in 2020 in Luanda, Angola, which was particularly important because for us in the Capoeira community, Angola is considered sort of the Mecca or the heartland of uh, where the ancestral forms of Capoeira came from. This year, we have our fourth edition, uh, which is going to be in Nairobi and Watamu. Really excited. We have the presence of Maestre Jogo Gidentro. We have uh, Maestra Marileni Rodriguez and a lot of guests who will be here, including Maestre Kojo, Maestre Kamau, uh, some professors as well who specialize in African and diaspora martial arts. Um, we'll also this year have special workshops, including traditional Kenyan percussion. Uh, we have a workshop on healing herbs from the coast and um, some other really exciting uh, workshops that, that bring up really uh, this is African arts. So this is a platform in which we can uh, explore and, and express Capoeira Angola, but together with other African arts. Capoeira Angola is an African-based martial art that comes out of Central West Africa, Angola and Congo. It was developed by enslaved Africans from that region as a way to preserve their culture as a form of resistance within the context of 
enslavement, the transatlantic slave trade or uh, slave genocide. And um, it combines elements of, of music, dance, ritual. I'd say at its core, it's a, a ritual ceremony that we express through the circle of Capoeira, which we call a hoda. And it was a way in which the enslaved Africans could preserve their culture, but also resist the oppression that they found themselves within slavery. Kibera for me is a really special community. It's one of the first uh, communities that I, I taught Capoeira Angola in. And I feel a special, personally, a special connection uh, and um, value in this community. I think the youth here really benefit a lot from Capoeira Angola. <laughs> The ways that we're able to ironically reconnect them with some of their African traditions and roots. So I really feel like Capoeira flourishes here because Capoeira is the expression of people who are oppressed themselves and people in Kibera go through a lot of challenges just dealing with um, you know lack of support from from government and things like that and the social issues that happen here. So I feel like Capoeira has a special um, a special value and meaning coming to a community like Kibera and I can say also that in terms of the history of Capoeira it was created from communities like Kibera. So we have some amazing maestres and teachers coming. Our primary uh, facilitator is Maestre Jogo Gidentro, who's a student of Maestre João Piqueno in the Capoeira Angola tradition. We have Maestre Marileni, who comes from a Quilombo community in Brazil, which is a community established by escaped slaves historically. And then we have a lot of special guests coming from the U.S. Maestres, including Maestre Kojo, who's been giving free workshops to youth in the community, Maestre Kamau. Uh, uh, Professor T.J. Deshobi is a, um, one of the foremost scholars on African-based martial arts. Um, Maestre Bujão, Professor Gamela. Um, uh, Professor João Reis is coming from Angola and he's done extensive research on one of the ancestral forms that we have uh, for Capoeira Angola, which is called the Angolo Dance. So he'll be sharing some of his current research that he's been doing within that, within that art and culture. Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's a new week for Majinga Ancestral. We are doing a festival in Kibera, uh, courtesy of Salim Rollins and the work that we do with the Nuka. We are really excited, don't miss out. Next week is going to be fire. We also, Mr. Salim, we are very excited. This oh, is so a good dream to be come here. True. We got Mr. Kojo over here. Mr. Kojo. Yeah, Washington, D.C. area. We have St. Croix, Puerto Rico. We're right. international. So. so yeah, this is amazing, bringing people from the diaspora to Africa. The heart yes. of where Salim does it work. Yeah. Congratulations, bro, Good and thanks, I'm Vic, so very man. happy for you. <laughs> so join us, guys. Mr. Kojo, how do you feel being in Africa? Hey, I feel great. Man. I feel at home. Yeah? Yeah. I'm what are you looking forward to? What are your expectations for this festival? I have zero expectations. That yeah? way, everything is You should enjoyed. have expectations when no, you come to Africa. No, I expect Africa. nothing. <laughs> vibration? You don't even expect vibration. I bring the vibration. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know this for yourselves now. Don't miss out. Next week is going to be fire. All is going to be in Kibera and Watamu. If you want to join us, be sure to join us. This is the work that we do here and we hope to see you. Yes, yes, that was it. I hope you like it. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, please hit the subscribe button. And if you are in Nairobi and the surrounding, please show some love. Show up. Uh, present yourself. There are going to be workshops from different people. Qigong, Capoeira, brick dancing, a lot of things right here in Kibera. This is what brought me back here and I'm so excited that you guys keep supporting. I was really loving uh, every support that I was getting for uh, the county um, tour. We're going to continue. I came back particularly for this festival. I appreciate and celebrate you guys, Victor. Adios!